This is Brownies Podcast! Hey, welcome to Brownies Podcast. Let's just get this out of the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Baby, when the lights go out, every single working night express. It's unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, I loved it. The rebuild of the Gabba can't come quick enough oh, for the Olympics in 2032. Brownie, just get it out. Why, wh- how useless, what happened? It is a shithole, actually. So when I first started the Gabba in the late 90s, the sewer, the open uh, sewer vent came up through the gym. Oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, excellent. So, mate, it was rotten eggs every time you did your weights. It never been quicker our weight sessions the lines to just get out of there. It was terrible. But Friday night, for there to be a blackout, with 10 it. minutes to go. I loved it. Yeah, it was. Well, the, I didn't the, love it because I had to do the post game. We didn't get yeah, off push you back about 40 midnight. minutes. Yeah. I was flat. I wanted to have now, a beer on Let's there. just get this out. I was shit faced that night at home after a long week, and you were on the desk, and your phone was on the desk. Yeah. And I'm with my mate saying, Watch this, I'll make his phone vibrate. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no no way. No time, way. Every time we brown his phone to ring, they'd change the f- shot. Change the shot. They'd go tired on gas. And they, no, <laughs> they knew the phone was ringing as well. <laughs> How many missed calls? Four missed calls. Uh, <laughs> so you were messing with the, with the Fox That's camera, a great camera idea. crew. So JJ, uh, JJ, our director, was not happy with Dino. Because no, well. you could see my de- my phone just popping around the desk like it was on drugs. But, uh, All right, back to the what, light. What, mate, why was your phone on drugs? <laughs> why was your phone on drugs? Because it was high. It was high. Because it was, it was, it was <laughs> high. It was vibrating. It was vibrating. Uh, it was unbelievable. I tell you, Brisbane were flying, weren't they? And in the last 10 minutes, Melbourne nearly got... Nearly, nearly storm over the top of nine points it was. I don't think it was handled that well by the AFL. The rules are they're allowed 60 minutes uh-huh. break uh-huh. Um, to come out and resolve the result, um, no matter how much time is left. Obviously, there was that blackout back in 96 between Essen and St. Kilda when they had 20 minutes to go and they had to come back the following Tuesday night and finish the game off. They changed the rules from that point on, so they had an hour to resolve it. However, though... It was chaos because both teams didn't know what was going on. Yeah. How Melbourne were allowed out on the ground mm. 10 minutes before Brisbane to re-warm Warm up. up. So they were ready to go. And then Brisbane just had to run out on the ground. And then all the players stood in the centre, on the field in their starting positions and stood and looked at each other for about three or four minutes until the organisers decided, hey, now it's time to bounce the ball. So yeah. I think that's what cost Brisbane. They were so tardy to get rolling that it nearly cost them the game. Nine points. Mm. With about 90 seconds to go, Melbourne kicks mm. a goal where it is game on. It would have been the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. And Brisbane have lost 13% on their latter percentage. And Chris Fagan rightfully questioned, you know, a lot of the things JB just spoke about. He was angry. He was disappointed. Could you imagine what Fags would have been like if they had got rolled? Oh, like if it was a slightly closer nice. game, 20, 25 points, and Melbourne ran over the top of him, yeah. he would have been incensed. Right. In that situation, like is Gill at home with, you know, Fairy Floss having a cigarette and a glass of He's wine. He's on the phone. And does he get a call like, oh, f- me, this f- job. Every f- weekend something f- goes wrong. Well, he does, but i tell you what, he, was, he wasn't too worried about what time the players were coming back on and all this sort of stuff. All he was worried about was Gary Lyon's comment that, oh, this is, this is ridiculous, this is getting too late, it's 10.40 at night. He texts Gary and said, remember there's no daylight savings in Queensland, Gary. Bullshit! <laughs> I love that. Really? Mate, on air! On air, so Gaz obviously had his phone on, unlike me, Dino. But D- uh, Gil has texted G- Gaz. So oh, Gil, I love that. So don't worry. Well, so why Gil's is Gil watching Channel Seven broadcast? Why is he watching yeah, that's Fox? Huge. He's watching Fox. Jeez. Hey, the great broadcaster that is Fox and Ko. We love him, but Gil's at home, probably a bottle and a half in, yeah. and he's just saying to start Gaz's comments. So hey, on, come on, Gaz. Hey, Get let me tell you, you. he's spot on though. Gil's bottles don't have a screw top. They're oh, cork no. all the way. Grange. Cork, baby. He's, mate, he's South Australian blue blood. He's a big linen shirt cork boy. Absolutely. Hey, so mate. he's only drinking the best, mate. He has yeah. Grange on his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry about the that. Close up, the close-up of that single light on fire magic. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I can't believe they got back, man. That looked like a... Danger to everyone at the ground. Well, I'm actually surprised the ground didn't get evacuated. No yeah, shit, don't you man. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Like, well, there's fire up in the uh, the light globe. So. so that was the, the first sort of controversy of the round. Yep. What did you make of the, the finish to the North Melbourne and uh, Dockers game? Because um, that's the right call. It was the right call. You can't, and up by can't give a free kick for something that hasn't actually occurred yet. And while it was intentional mm-hmm. and they're about to pay it, uh-huh. the siren sounds. It's not a free there kick. There is no play. That's There's right. no play. As soon as the siren goes, there is no play. But when you... A- apart from a kick after the siren, which we all know. Yeah. And if it's a bouncing ball uh-huh. and the siren sounds... The AFL said that the siren 
sounded before it went out, but it didn't. No, but it did it, in the ears of the the timekeeper that had it. Uh, okay. Blows the siren. Right. The umpires hear that through their mic, That's right. and then it takes half a second or whatever it is, for it to reverberate around the ground. It is when the umpire deems that he has heard the siren. Okay, that, right. that is the rules. Okay, right. So yeah. they obviously hear it through their ears, and straight away they obviously blow the whistle. So it's in the view of the umpires, Dino, yeah. whether it's inbounds or out of bounds, and ultimately it goes back to their decision. Clarko arcing up on the... He was excited. Like he, oh, he, he was excited. He's got that, energy again. That's a big win. Like, for, for any group to go across to the Nullarbor and play... Hardest trip in football. You know, any West Australian side. It's the toughest trip. So for a young club mm. that's on the way up, second game that he's coaching. Actually, that's a, you that's owe, a huge You win. owe us Clarko. You said last year, I guarantee you I will get Clarko yeah, on this I'll podcast. Clarko. Yeah, Brother, you've been promising it for 18 months. Dog, you don't have to lie to us. We're your friends. I'm more of a chance of getting Clarko. I spoke to yeah. his manager in the airport last year, Hendo, and I said, mate, we need Clarko. And he said, I will deliver you There's Clarko. no doubt that JB would speak to Clarko more than I do and you know, at the moment. So maybe we just... Clarko. Take the responsibility off my hands and give it to someone that can All actually right. deliver. You want this burden? Well, I'm confident I can deliver Clark, eh? Just to prove Let, the dog's full of shit. There you have it, Jonathan Brown. Probably Let's have an arms race. I'm going to go after him as well. Okay. We're going to attack him from both sides okay. and we'll okay, see which one. That. It's okay. an arms race. Let's see how it unfolds. Uh, right. No, it was, it was a good effort by them. So a great win to go over Dockers. there and win. Dockers. Uh, In trouble. What do you reckon, Dana? You watch the West Australian well, football the, closely. I'm the wrong person to ask because I'll just give a real biased opinion because uh, we've got a spicy history. But it does mean that the Western Derby might have a bit of fire because Eagles look like they could have at least a chance. Dog, Hawthorne, what do you reckon? Are you just accepting that it could be a rough year? Nah, they're, they're in more trouble than I thought. I, I tipped them to finish second last on the ladder. I actually thought North would be last. But they play each other this week down in Tassie. How oh, good. And oh, what, what a clash. Huge. Can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah. Is there, bad, is there yeah. still bad blood between, well, Clarko and Hawthorne, but Clarko and Mitch, how would their relationship be? Um, uh, it's not great. Um, so I, I think this is going to be like a mini grand final for Clarko. I mean, the fact that they're 2-0 and now and he's come up against his former club and le- he's got Liam Shields and Daniel Howe there that are former uh, Hawthorne people. He's going to be... He's gonna, <laughs> I reckon he's going to whip this... this Kangaroo side into a bit of a frenzy for him to say, "Hey boys, let's we've got a, a chance to be unbeaten this year." So right, he'll yes. use you uh, use that narrative yep. and really you know get going. But deep down, he'll be thinking, "I want to stick it right up <laughs> Hawthorne's ass, oh, oh, right up there." That was that was eloquently put, wasn't it? <laughs> Because <laughs> he's so competitive, and um, I mean, there's, there's no sugar. It might be good was... for football, uh, How... Brownog, because uh, Hawthorne um, Tasmanian football has been struggling a little bit, especially with Hawthorne the last couple of years. So hopefully, a good crowd turns up. It, unbelievably, you're right. North got a very good opportunity to be three and zip. Oh, Same they will as, be. That, that's right. So the new coaches have been big, haven't they? So Clarko, we've spoken about him. Brad Scott and Ross Lyon Mate. as well. Their teams are flying. So it's undefeated. Wild. Airborne, and um, and it's fair to say, like it's it's hard to see where the goals have going to be come from because, mm. you know, Peter Wright and Stringer have been out for Essendon. They've just found a way to, you know, Langford on the weekend, kick five. Yep. Um, and then St Kilda, you look at their injury list. Mate. Mate, they, they've only got about 25 players to choose from. It was a bunch of first and second year players. Mm. The one thing you can guarantee from Clarkson, Lyon and Brad Scott, They've got presence. Oh, yeah. They've got automatic respect. So when they walk into that locker room for the first time yeah. and they demand, oh. demand accountability. More presence than Santa Claus. That's right. More, I love that. More presence than Santa well Claus. Well done, dog. That's but, another great phrase. Yeah. But they demand defensive accountability and to be hard to play against and hard to score against. And for you to follow these standards, no matter what, you're going to get that every time. And that's what Essendon have been hard to play against. North have been hard to play against. And St Kilda have been hard to play against. So yep. if you actually look at it in its totality, it's yep. not surprising that these three men have been able to get the best out of their list at the moment, which at the at the moment are not at the top of the tree. Yep. You know, if you actually look at the talents across the level of the teams, yeah. you wouldn't have had North Melbourne, no St shit. Kilda and Essendon at yeah. the top of the tree talent-wise. Braves, what do you reckon? Does that mean that if, say, someone like uh, Brendan Bolton, who is supposedly a great assistant coach and a great person, yeah. or David Noble, for instance, they walk into a locker room and the respect isn't as strong as on. it would be for someone else? And do, is that... The players don't play for them. Clearly, they didn't play for Carlton, didn't play for Brendan Bolton. Clearly, they didn't play for David Noble at the time. Is that because well, it's a matter of it's respect? Not, it's not that they don't have respect for them. 
The fact is, there's a fear factor about it. I know fear when I played factor. under the great Lee Matthews, Oof. I can still remember the non-negotiables he had. You can remember them on the back, like it's on the back of your hand, okay? And you've got that fear, that little subconscious fear in the back of your head. If I don't do this and don't do this every single time, I will lose respect from him, and he will. Uh, I will lose respect from him, and I'll lose my spot in the team ultimately. So there is that fear factor. Don't you worry about that. Now, coach will argue. I oh, know we don't want our players playing on fear, but it is. It is a subconscious thing that you go out and you get the job done, and that's what these men, yeah. these three men, who have been successful coaches in their own right, pre. Now they've demanded that and they've been able to get it. Ideas are worth nothing unless backed by application. The smallest of implementations is always worth more than the grandest of intentions. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just shorten all that. They've all got big dick energy. Am I right? Big dick energy. What about a man with big dick energy, Nick Dacos? Over oh. the MCG. Right on, man. Has he, has he got big dick energy? Absolutely. Well, he does at the moment. How can you be Brownlow favourite in your second year? Mate, he's a freak. He hasn't missed a game of football since he got drafted. Mm. He is averaging about 27 disposals across his career. Remember that game he had 40 and kicked three yes. over in Adelaide yeah. like last year? 18, 19-year-old kids don't do that. No. Um, he got tagged on the weekend by a guy that's pretty disciplined. That was at a his terrible job. decision, though. On the advice, we love Fly. Kidding. Fly Kid- suggested someone tag him. Yeah, yeah. Fly yeah. did. Yeah, he he did. He, he um. So what, what did you do? He, he put a target fairly square on Nick da- Dacos's back. Yeah, because he, he knows he's going to handle for it. Jones. Why would he have gone for Jones? Jones is a halfback flanker. He's got a great mullet. Admittedly, I'm not sure how he goes as a tagger. Though. I'm not sure that was a great decision by Kenny and the boys. I remember David King coming out at the start of the season, and I think he tweeted it. He said, Nick Dacos will win the Brownlow this year. And naturally, we all we all laughed, right? Because he's a second-year King. player. He's, King. Played, King. he's played 25 games. He... Could be spot on, mate. He's on six Brownlow votes. I know it's a long year, but how good the Collingwood look? Right. And I reckon Nick Dacos playing well mm. um, brings out the best in his brother Josh. Like since Nick got to the club, Josh is a different player now. Yeah. Um, and the sibling sort of rivalry, we're trying to one up each other. They're flying. Nick this... Dacos is a freak, and he kicked the ball and as it hit his boot mm. from. 50, he put his hand in the air because yeah, he knew it was home. Mm-hmm. I used to do that all the time, mate. Exactly. No, but you'd oh, wait, you'd wait till out. it was mid-air, not off your actual I boot. I knew. I knew. You just know, don't you? Yeah, at least seventy-three yeah. percent of the time, I knew. You invented the finger in the air. I've just <laughs> never seen it so quickly up. Is it a tingle in the loins that lets you know? You just know internally. You in do, your, absolutely. In your groin, when it hits the boot. Hey, don't worry. Is there a tingle in the loins though for Dacos or for Jason Horn Francis? If you had to put your life in the line, you can only have one player. Who are you going for, dog? Oh well, right now. The numbers and the impact on games and everything, it's its clear. It's Nick Dacos every day of the week. Um, he's hes done it in finals. He played very well in Give the three finals. Give me five years. No, Nick Dacos is a prodigy. I think he could be oh, anything. Really? Yeah. He's a freak. Are you prepared job? to put something on it? Like he's going to win five Brownlows? Or are you going to no, put a big statement? I'm prepared to say in the totality of their careers, we will look back... And Nick Dacos will have a much better career than Josh a uh, much, than, than Horn Francis. A much better Brody. How do you respond as a Port Adelaide supporter? Jason Horn Francis is a prodigal talent, and he will prodigal, prodigal, prodigal. Is that a word? It is, it, <laughs> say it again. Prodigal. <laughs> Mate, that's <laughs> not a word. Is that a word? It, it man? is a word. That is not. A word. Why are you, you looking for prodigious? Someone, <laughs> prodigious someone, or prodigal? Someone Google it. Prodigious. Prodigal. Prodigal. No, it's not. Mate, you know what? And, and I am John's on it. That is not a Wait, word. Google it. I'm, a, I'm the judge of the English language. Oh, I'm probably the best, right? the, the best exponent of it. Well, and that a, is not. He's a Scotch boy. Prodigal. Yeah. Pr- prodigal. Yeah. It's not a word. I would say it's if the, it's a word, I'll give you a hundred dollars cash. Uh, no, there's only prodigal. <laughs> <laughs> there's prodigious. And you've prodigal. combined the two, you, you absolute flog. Let's go around the room real quick. I and think it might be a. It might be an indigenous artifact. <laughs> no, I was that. referring to that clearly. You guys, he wouldn't pick it up when I was throwing down. Poor Collingwood. Did Broads get spotted?
Because you were there in your prison bars, Guernsey, and the, we did throw it out there that there is a slab of beer, Dino. Yeah, the challenge the was... the first person to... Fine, Brody, go harass him, give him a smooch. And if you put it on social media, JB will give you a slab of mother's milk. Well, what happened? I was in a very fancy area, so I was I in the Jim that. Stein's grill, the glass. which oh, is wow. very nice behind the glass. Just I'm keep me away from the riffraff. i get behind that. No, no, tell me about it. And I had my prison bars on, uh-huh. and there was two guys that walked past, and they pointed at me, and it was quite deliberate. They were pointing at me. <laughs> 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 I could tell. Oh, here he is, the big boy. I could, feel- I could tell, and they were pointing. They've been quite. Whether it was, I had defended them with the prison bars as well, but they were very like they knew what was going. Are on. Are you claiming that a random person pointing was them spotting you? Well, yeah, I. They were technically first. God, that's weird. The second the time I went to the London, the London table, great oh, yeah. pub, yeah. Yeah. and I was accosted by a young fellow there who didn't even give me his name, big boy. And he's like, what? I love... His weight is not necessary. Yeah, well... And he said, I love Brownie's podcast. And so he's technically the one. But he didn't give me his name, so I actually can't give him the slap. A photo? I got a photo. Okay. But the second one was my favourite. Yeah. It was... This guy we're at the precincts a bit later on. This is getting pretty Jeez, late. you've had a big day. This is, this is getting a bit later on. This is about... Oh, it would have been maybe midnight. Oh, wow. And he comes up and he goes, I need a photo. He goes, I'm like... He goes, I'm one of the Gwen Waverly boys. I was like... Oh. Oh no, not he, from that Mad Monday. He goes, I was there on Mad Shit. Monday. He goes, you've got to remember me. He wasn't me. the captain, was he? he? No, he goes, that's my best mate. I was oh, like, no. oh, that's a proud moment. And so then he's like, oh, come get a photo. And he made me FaceTime his mates, who also listened to the podcast. And we were a bit weary by this point. And he said, if you don't mention it on the podcast, I'll fucking bash you. Whoa, I'm like, well, great. That's, well, that's lovely. Really? You know, I was did, three people. And did you get a head job off him? Because he's a Glen Waverly that's, that's a fair question. That is a fair Considering question. Considering why we're talking about them, that is a valid question. He was, he was very proud of the club, very proud of the club's history. Very okay. proud. I see they're out this year. They're not playing. Oh, well, they folded the club. Right. Yeah. It's it's the abolished. Club. They were abolished. Hey, back to my game. Oh, the West Coast Eagles shit. Go, go. Well, I love the change in game style. They decided to actually play fast footy. And Simo looks Exciting like he's footy. invested again. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, he was like a cat in a hot tin roof. That he coach chucking box. bottles around? <laughs> Doc. Uh, no. When Tim Kelly plays like that, and McGovern's good down back, and Waterman's in the side, Shit. and uh, Cripps is chasing. No, uh, Luke. Uh, Still got stars. Luke Shuey. Luke, Luke Shuey, Shuey. Liam Ryan. Well. Mate, Oscar they were all good. Back. They were, we're all good, weren't they? We're back. We've already had half of the wins we had last season. I just wish they won the week before when I declared them as the bet of the round. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another thing. Uh, one of our degenerates in the WhatsApp crew is angry. Roy has sent through this audio, not happy. G'day, pup. I'm really disappointed in you today. Everybody else got around me on Saturday for my birthday, but you didn't. I thought we were friends. You ruined it now. West Coast supporters love the number nine on the back of the Eagles jumper. Went worked at the same Domino's back in WA, and we're both West Australians. What a joke! I hope you can't sleep and you dream about it. And when you dream, I hope you can't sleep and you scream about it. You ruined it now, pup. What is wrong with you? Come on, mate. You're better than that. You want to be the face of Brownie's podcast? You gotta lift your game. WTB, baby. Love you, brown dog. Oh, oh, wow. Good on you, Roy. Roy that's big Roy's a that's happy garbage. birthday. Roy's a happy birthday, Roy. Happy birthday, Roy. Hey, we're going to take some ads. Back in a second. This is Brownie's Podcast. Welcome back to Brownie's Podcast. Man, footy, I love this season already, all right? Yeah, so much has happened. it's exciting. Well, there's teams that are down the bottom last year. They're up the top of the ladder this mm. year. There's mm. teams that we thought were going to go well. They're struggling. Unpredictable. Well, that man's the Western Bulldogs, boy. In all Absolutely three terrible. phases of the game, uh, three phases of the game, senior players, especially around the middle. They're allergic that, to pressure, mate. That, Anyone brings pressure, they just fold up. Allergic to pressure, yeah. I'm worried. They're not invested for me. So that's a big watch. That's a big challenge for Bevo to get them out of it. And, and as great as it is, uh, the greatest reality you know, TV out there, there can be some bad sides to mm. it, can't there, which we saw with um, Jamar Hugo Hagen. When was this in the game, this this racist call-out? I believe it was a fan in the crowd that had yelled something out and then was overheard and rightfully reported, and yeah. they, yeah. Well, what do you make of it, Daniel? Here we go. Well, no, it's, this, is, this is a cycle we go in. This happens. Indigenous members of the football world have to get tired and comment on it. It's just bullshit, obviously. We all know that. So we're not arguing is it bad or not. But the point is it has to. we have to keep calling them out 
and make it not cool. I love how, you, I love how you said the Indigenous members of our football community get drawn into it. The yeah, players, the yeah. participants that have to get drawn into it. So they'd be, you'd have players across the league today walking yep. into training and yep. getting door stopped for their comment. And then they become a part of the story yep. when they had nothing to do with the story. And people might go, it's just sticks and stones. It's just uh, name calling. Just don't listen, but it's different. It's insulting their family, their whole heritage. You're calling them less than by your stupid bullshit. So we have to do this every time. It's fatiguing. Eddie Betts will get rolled out to comment. The poor yeah. bastard. He's we're all tired. It's extraordinary in 2023 that you know it needs to constantly continue to be addressed. It's the ignorance. It's, yeah, it should be a life ban for me. It should be a life ban, and you are never. If you are going to bring that into the ground, that you should never be allowed back. It's wild. It will happen again. But we're just going to keep calling it out. What a f- it. He used the. The C word, which is real nasty. Which is the yeah, most And offensive. I think following That's it up f- on social media afterwards. He doubled down. He doubled what down a, on it. What a cockhead. Mm. And he's going to... I would argue certainly adults above the age of 18. We know we had that Adam Good, Goods incident years ago, incident years ago, where there was a 13-year-old girl yeah, yeah, yelled yeah. out those profanities. But I would argue certainly from the age of 18 onwards, once you're an adult... I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree with the life ban, bros. Mate, you know, there's no there's no room for it in any sport in Australia. Yeah, there's no room for it anywhere. Full yeah. stop. But uh, especially not in our great game. Do you get hurt and or angry? Like, angry and your, fatigued. Angry. So yeah, it's. But if it's said to you, that's when the hurt and the the trauma sort of engulfs you, and it's a pile of bullshit. We've seen people get called out time and time and time again, and it becomes a big public story. So, what goes through someone's head thinking mm. that they can get away with it? Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm. one. You shouldn't have the thought to start with, but then to think you'll get away with it yeah. in a public, you know, forum, or even if you slide into someone's DMs on Instagram or social media, they're going to screenshot it. Yeah, they're going to report it to the AFLPA, the AFL, post it on their own, and what, call you out on it. What do you guys reckon? You can't so, escape. You, you can't escape. Think you can get away with it? No. If you're this guy, right, and you're going to get a lot of backlash, a lot of punishment for this thing, does this make you more of a racist <laughs> wit or less of a racist <laughs> wit? After all, in a week's time. Is he angrier at the world, or is there any chance oh, of this person? He should be embarrassed and and say that is the wake up call I need. Yeah, I've been called out by the public. Probably family and friends will say, "Mate, what are you doing?" Yeah. Right, and should learn that that'll never happen again. You'd In, think. You'd think, but he just could be. This could be counterproductive. Be well, fucking. maybe there's a life ban. Unless you're prepared to go through counselling and prove that you've been re-educated yeah. uh, to allow yourself back into the football. Yeah. So there has to be a strong stance with all this to stamp it all out. But I'm glad more and more people are obviously aware of it and are calling out these idiots Bang. when it does happen during games. Okay, gather round. It's going to be a big old party. Um, mm. I'm looking forward to that. Now, Brown Dog, I think you're going to make an appearance over there. Me and Dino are going to do... <sighs> Probably a couple of days over there, no doubt it's about. We'll be no, actually we'll be on the ground the whole time. So me and Dean, I'll be doing the podcast. Brown Dog, you may make an appearance. No, We're definitely. trying to get a couple of recruits that we may have to replace you when you're not on oh, the ground really? over there. Mark my words, Pang and I are going to go to Mark Rashudo's house and drink his whiskey. Who's in? I'd no. I'd love to be. Well, I tell you who else will be drinking their whiskey. I hope, and this is a way we could get him over line. I'm proposing the potential guest Who? on the podcast for Gather Round. You, you need the biggest name in South Australian McLeod. football. Well, Nathan Buckley used to be McLeod. Um, Sam Pang's going to be over there. Shit. No, McLeod. No, um, uh, Mark Bickley. Mark Bickley. No, no. Malcolm Blight. No. no. Who you got? Kane, the volcano. No. Kane Corn, no. no. I'm going straight to Tony Modra. Oh, Modra. <laughs> We are going to hunt Whoa. down Tony Modra. Wow. This is the last thing this podcast ever do, Shit. ever does. We are going to hunt down the great Tony Modra. I was with him last year. I went over there for a game, Adelaide versus Melbourne, and I ended up on the Scotches. Did you realise he's got the function room there at the Crows where he gets around all the sponsors? And then they've got the you know, the beer. There's probably Carlton Drafts there, yeah. a few red wines from South Australia. Yep. He said to the barman, he goes, I'll just have the regular from my stash, please. That's Godra for you. Oh, yeah. And they bu- brought a beautiful top shelf bottle of scotch out, which is just reserved especially for Tony Modra. Wow. Johnny Blue. A secret little cupboard. Was it Johnny Blue, Absolutely. brother? Absolutely. Is he still Blue. Blue. So we, very may, uh, we may have to turn up on Godra's doorstep <sighs> with a bottle of Johnny Blue. Is <sighs> it fair to say that Tony Modra is the late 90s, early 2000s version of Bailey Smith? Mm. Yep. Yes. yep. The body, the yep. look. That's a the good flair. call. But more exciting than more Barry exciting. Smith. 
Oh, Mate, jumped check. on heads. Jumped, jumped on, on heads. heads. It heard... was a great goal. He kicked 129 goals one yeah, that's year. Good. In the first five years of the Dockers being in the league, they couldn't beat the Eagles. Modra went over there, remember that? He, yes. he played out his career as a full forward for Dockers. They beat the Eagles for the first time, and apparently he went out night clubbing in thongs <laughs> yeah. and double pluggers. He would have done everything that Bailey Smith has done <laughs> times 10. Mate. Imagine if it was Instagram back when he played the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> amount of... Putting a, women a camera would be over a cubicle following in around. those days. Oh, no. I'm not saying anything. No. Uh, uh, what, is he still a good-looking man? Or Absolutely. Is he, has he aged gracefully? No, he's filled out. Yeah. Oh. He's a beef farmer now. He's a farmer up in uh, South Australia, about an hour out of town. So is he handsome or does he look like an old potato? Mate, mate Tony Modra will always be handsome. <laughs> You're right, mate. He's like Brad Pitt. He, and he's hot. Exactly right. They're never going to old. They're never going to age. So anyway, like this. We're, we're going to chase down Godra. Oh, That'd be huge. Sure? That That'd be huge. the podcast oh. maybe biggest moment, I reckon. Brian, what do you got? All right. So there was another thing from the weekend that really uh, spurned something in my mind, all right? So they were talking about booing. Because they were booing Jason Horn Francis at the Collingwood game. They were just giving it to him. Boo like your mother's boy, all this kind of stuff, right? One of my friends was actually next to... That is, you love this story. So, was at the Collingwood game mm-hmm. and was at... So, you know how, obviously, Ollie Henry has left Collingwood and gone to Geelong. Yes. And a friend of mine was absolutely giving it to Ollie Henry from over the fence. Mm. Giving it to how him. How far from the front row? Uh, close enough? Third row. Oh, yeah. Very audible. close. Nice, audible. Very audible. And was absolutely giving it to him. Saying what? Giving us, a, give us an you're example. Your boy, you're a pussy. You ran home and it's an hour down the road. Smart stuff, John. Yeah, oh, really yeah, highbrow stuff. stuff. Yeah. What uh, TAR score or whatever it's called, ATAR score, did they get? <laughs> it, it, it was low. Fair to say it was low. And then this woman was like kind of cringing, and it was she was one seat in front of him. Yeah. And she was cringing, and he's like, "Oh, that's weird." And anyway, he's giving it to her the entire time. Turns out that the other guy that he was with goes, "This, I recognise that woman somewhere." He went to. Ollie Henry's Instagram page. It was his mum. Oh, what a dick! It was dick. his mum <laughs> giving it to giving it to Ollie all what game, and it was his mum sitting in front of him. What a dick! What's it? What's his mum doing sitting oh, in the second row of the grandstand? No though? idea. And she didn't say up in the word. Players. She didn't say a word. Just sat there and cringed. Surely oh. she's up in the family section, oh. like about level two. Or no level idea. Three. Isn't that unfortunate? Painful. But anyway, Jeez, a mob no. man turned around one day um, after some people had been giving it to me in the medallion club all game. And he, um, he well deserved though, would have yeah, would have been, yeah. and it could have even been against Essendon, which was even more. And he, he threatened to knock him out if they said one more word. Just after um, half time, he he gave him two quarters of grapes, oh, yes. but then he had a gutful. And did they say anything after that? No, they were very apologetic. <laughs> <laughs> but this brings me to booing. Amazing. So Jason Horn Francis was being booed like on Saturday so much by the Collingwood fans, and you know what? Fair enough. He's Controversial, and you know what? A lot of people say that they're allowed to boo. I actually don't think that booing has any effect. Jason still played a decent game, not unless and, you're mentally weak. And so, I don't think that you could boo as loud as you can. You have a hundred thousand people booing you. I don't think it actually makes. If you're any a really difference. sensitive guy that wants everyone to to like them in life, you know, which is always going to be hard, it might take you aback a little bit, especially if you're not expecting it. Uh-huh. But I would suggest that most professional athletes who are yeah. Stone cold killers, you know their mindset yeah. is, you know, just get the job done at any cost. One, it wouldn't affect their performance. I reckon it would fire you up. I reckon it'd give you energy. Now, if you're in any way, if anyone's in here in any way is referring to Goodsy, I think all that changed. Yeah, form, now that's the that difference. That's, that's, that's different. That, nah, but purely booing someone yeah. because your yeah, Essen supporters used to boo me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure if you left clubs and went to another club, they, you know, the opposition. Supporters would boo. Did you. anyone ever boo you, Brownie? Bill oh, Mil- all the time. Milne got booed, about, like, especially Collingwood supporters. What? Because Colling- you almost came there. Uh, well, no, because we beat him in grand finals and Essendon supporters as well. Yeah. So you beat him in grand it- finals, and you have those big rivalry. The teams that you have the big rivalries against, mm. and you may have played well against, they boo you, but you take it as like a, you know, it's almost a compliment. Jason Horn France has been likened to Nathan Buckley. Nathan Buckley would have been one of the most booed players in the history of the game, but had a had a mind. You know, a mind like steel. So mm. Bucks absolutely lifted and loved the occasion. I think Jason Horn France, from what I'm told, would, would, like, would, it. would like it as well. It's this a noise of endearment. It's so, so, a noise right, of endearment. If we boo you, Campbell, would you be able to, say, read an article from your phone? Would we be, if we booed you, would it put you off at all? I'd be unflappable. If all, if all three of us did? No, it? I'd be unflappable. Okay, all right, I'd be prove fine. it. What do you propose? So, well, Dog's got an article. And we're just going to all, we're going to boo him and see if he can yeah. do it without all faltering. Right. I want you to do it with a real sunny disposition. So, you have to sound real pleasant. Sure. So, your pleasantness is not. Not affected by us booing. Okay. All right. Off you go, man. Whenever you're ready. Man's drunken mistake leads to embarrassing hospital visit. 
When a man turned up to the emergency department of his local hospital with severe abdominal pains, doctors couldn't believe what they'd found. This 47-year-old man was left in extreme pain and needed surgery after he inserted a water glass into his rectum. The Nepalese man arrived at the emergency department admitting the object had been inserted in him for three days. Initially... The man said it happened by accident before revealing he had inserted the glass himself for sexual gratification while intoxicated. Right. Was that a pass or a fail? Yeah. What do you oh, reckon? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't even hear. I heard Dino yell at you, privileged prick. But apart from that... I didn't hear a single word you guys said then. I said you have gerbils as pets. <laughs> we know what gerbils are good for. No, but you did hear the privilege word, which got through to your yeah, side. That, that <laughs> cut through. Yeah, that cut through. But I was unflappable. Ants back in a second. This is Brownies Podcast. Hey, welcome back to Brownies Podcast. We're all we all look like shit apart from you, JB. Look at you. Oh, thank you, Dino. Thanks for recognising. I'm looking very sharp in a suit. Salmon. Pink, Salmon shirt. It's a little pink number with the, you know, cravat. Absolutely. I'm just been down the uh, the F1 track down the Albert Park, oh. down the road with, uh, <laughs> with our our co-host, our fellow co-host Nathan Buckley. Really? They turned up in a windshed, mind you. I've gone the effort of turning up in a suit and a blazer, <laughs> well, uh, but it's all part of the F1 promotion. It's going to be huge. Can you not refer to him as fellow co-host when he's done one? Show. He was a guest, hey, okay? Hey, a lot of heat coming on Bucks on social media saying he sounds too uh, casual. Oh, does he? He's not passionate he, he enough. He certainly was dressed casually enough for this photo <laughs> with the CEO of the F1, my Andrew Westcott, mind you. So I'm taking Jackie Brown on Sunday. Yeah, he loves it. Fantastic. He absolutely loves it. He wants to be a... He said, do you reckon I'll race in the F1s? I said, not if I've got anything to do with it, mate. <laughs> you might want your mum to... F Divorce me and marry a billionaire because that's what it takes. Um, so I'm taking him and his best mate Sunday. It's going to be pretty, pretty exciting. Because he met Lewis Hamilton last year, didn't he? He met Lewis Hamilton and he was stiff because Lewis Hamilton was running late to qualifying. So he ran across the paddock. Jackie Brown was there waiting. And Lewis didn't brush him, but he just didn't have time to stop and get an autograph. So hopefully Jackie will get the autograph or a selfie this week. Now, probably lucky I'm taking him Sunday because mm. I said to him, you can start riding to school. No worries at all. So he rides about his three k's to school, and I was wondering why he started to go earlier and earlier. Interesting. He started to leave at seven thirty, quarter to eight in the morning. Suspect. Man, really suspect. So, no. mate, the other day, and I then take little Mimi later on. They go to the same school. Yep. So Jackie boy's left home at quarter to eight. Now he reckons he's done in five minutes before. What That's his quickest time. Going on here. He left at quarter to eight. Then about eight thirty, I'm t I'm driving Mimi to school, mate. I drive past Jackie Brown on his bike just down the road from school. I go. Where the f have you been for the last 45 minutes? He's been rolled. He's been going each morning to the IGA for breakfast. <laughs> really? You're not feeding him at your joint. <laughs> He's been Mars bars, crunchies, <laughs> lollies. Really? I said, mate, he's a cash man. I said, where have you been getting this money? We've got this oh. little tray in the top drawer. Oh, you know, shit. you get home after a big night yeah, of piss. Put, Why don't you put all put the coins? Some coins in that. He's been raiding the coins. And because mate. there's so many bits of silver in there, Fair obviously income. he thought, Dad, I didn't think you'd notice. So and, and, every morning, I'm picturing this, Bam Bam is out the front of IGA yes. just punching back Mars bars. That's right. And it doesn't open till 8 o'clock, so a few days he's... unbelievable. <laughs> First, he's, he's stealing, stealing out stealing. of the jar, the money jar, and then going to IGA. Absolutely. Mate, so, that's exactly something you would have done at that age. Absolutely. Exactly. I loved it. You'll need a new set of teeth by the time he's 12, but uh, all good. So lucky Jackie Brown's going on Sunday, but it's going to be huge. The town will be pumping on Sunday. Looking forward. It's the first race I've actually ever been to. Mate, you've been amazing. to one? I've been to yeah the F Formula One heaps. Yeah, I'm looking forward. Oh, to it. Out west, <laughs> I went to the LG tent <laughs> once, yeah. and they gave me a free smartphone, and I sold it. Did nice. you? <laughs> she made That's money nice. of out of the event, big time, big time. Um, hey, no, it'd be good. You'd be able to watch that on KO there, fun. So it should be fun. Uh, it should be fun. My missus is wrapped. I'm going as well, JB. Um, <laughs> I had to break the news to her uh, that I'm going to Sydney this mm -hmm. weekend, yes. Friday, Saturday. What are you going for? Going to Randwick. Yeah, uh, um, Champions Day. Big wow. day of racing up there, and I thought my horse was going to be running Laws of Indices, but it's not. It's scratch, but I've still got to go, support the event. Um, I'll come back and, and do um, the, the footy on seven. Um, Why do you still have to go? I say the footy on wait, seven wait, on wait, 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 wait. The footy yes. on seven? Oh, yes. I say, what game are you doing? Uh, Sandingham game. That's right? footy. Oh. No, is that footy? And is it on seven? Yes and yes. 
And then... I'm not sure Kay is showing that one. No, no, <laughs> I'm not sure it makes the, I'm not sure it makes the level of It's K. one dude with a <laughs> handy cam from 2003 yeah. just zooming in and around the field, mate. Um, well, it's certain standards to uphold. And then Jess said, oh, well, then when you finish that, I wouldn't have seen you for a couple of days. Come home. We can yeah. go, go for lunch or something. I broke the news that I'm actually going to the Formula One. Now, <laughs> so it's going to be a big three days for me. I should have plenty to report. Hey, we've got a big weekend. I love your relationship. My name is Dean Thomas, and these are my observations from round two, 2023. Why the f*** does Jeremy Cameron squeeze that ball so hard every time? It is odd. It's distracting. I know he does it. Why? He, he fattens the end out. So it's easier to kick, otherwise they're too pointy. Wow. Well, wouldn't working. that make it more round and more unpredictable? My uh, property steward who's in charge of the balls for home games used to pump up the ball yes. whilst he was pushing the end of the ball against the bench to really? just fatten it out. When is he going to get done for ball tampering? He kicked 6 1, so maybe the other players should start doing it. That's no right. Shit. Good observation. Australian Idol was on the weekend, the grand final. Ooh, no wow. one watched it, right? No <laughs> one's watching that at all. No. Touchdown? No touchdowns, brother. Holden nowhere to be seen. But one of the main contestants fell down during it. Good. Did they get Stacked it? She was absolutely fine. Did it her performance? I love that. She sort did of not shit. win. She did not win. But I only bring this up because anytime someone falls down on TV, it's an excuse to play the great Denise Drysdale oh, I love this. during Holy Moly <laughs> when she's being chased oh, yeah. by a gopher and um, shit goes pear shaped. Put your hand in here. Give us your little furry hand. Oh! Ouch. Oh, oh, oh. That doesn't look good at all. Oh, I've done my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done my shoulder. Oh, oh you bastard. Oh. She was fine, but that audio will live on forever. My Eagles had a win on Sunday and nothing made me feel better. But God, don't you come crashing down to earth when you're reveling in success and then you hear the words... My name's Jason Dunsell and welcome to the bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when, you know, you tell your friends about a mate that they don't know and you might be lying and you pump it up a bit and you get caught. You guys know what I'm talking yeah. about? Richo, enjoy. It just keeps you guessing, football. It's the great thing. That's why we've all got a team. Because eventually our team's going to do something good. Tips this nightmare, BT. Yeah. I know someone who tipped every result last week, huh? Believe it. on that. Yeah. It's fluke. No. Richo. No, they're a football person. The cluggage. They tipped the draw. They actually tipped the draw. Oh, come they on, did. Richo. Richo, come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, don't Get your head us until that last yeah. day. No, I'm telling you. Yeah, well, Olympia. I want to know what See he... my footy tipping comp. Olympia. Olympia. He just chucked out a name. <laughs> <laughs> that was, and that was what he yeah. went with. Olympia. Yeah. Olympia yeah. Valance. Olympia. It could be Valance. Really? It absolutely could we be. Let's cross. Let's fact check that with Olympia Valance. Yeah, we'll call it. Yeah, good one. There can't be two Olympias, man. Could not be. I know another Olympia. There are two. Okay, so, we'll call both sure of your Olympias <laughs> and see if either knows Richo. Finally, Maxi Gorn did his knee. It was real horrible, man. I really felt for him. Yeah, he was on did. the TV a lot. Luckily, kept... it's not twelve months. How long is it? Four to six. Oh, it's He'll cool. be back in three. But I was, I was real sad for him, and <laughs> I learned that people have varying levels of empathy because on our WhatsApp thread, Joe said. He's the captain. Get out the room, stop sucking, and get out and about because the boys are getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a strong statement. Strong. We might need Joey on the podcast next Monday. <laughs> hey, see you Friday. Take care.